Grace and peace, everyone. Grace Welcome. And peace. Welcome to another evening at the well with Deaconess Sandra, Deaconess Natasha, and Sister Raquel Blair. And tonight we're going to be talking about the word, the word, the word, which Amen. is the good news. So before, without further ado, we ask that you share the page. If you come on in the room, share the page. Tell your family and friends that we're here tonight to discuss the word, the word, the good news. So Deaconess Natasha is going to open a, up in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Grace and peace. Good evening, Sister Raquel. Good evening, um, all viewers. Um, as we come on tonight, our topic tonight will be the word, as um, Deaconess Sandra said. So I'm going to open up in prayer, and we're going to take it from there. Hallelujah. Father, we want to give you praise. We want to give you thanks, honor, and glory tonight, O oh God. Thank you for keeping us through the day, O oh Lord. Father, as we come once again to bring your word, we pray, O oh God, you continue to let there be less of us and more of you. Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you all tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So, Amen. Sandra, let's get going. You start, and then I'll, yeah. I'll jump in. Sister Raquel, all is well? Amen, all is well. Sister Amen. Raquel? Okay. Grace and peace, grace yes. and peace. So we're gonna, tonight we're gonna be talking about the word. And and our topic, one of the topics is, the scripture is gonna be from 2 Timothy 3, verse 14 to 17. And we're going, the word of God is, is really important because God reveals, reveals himself through it. It's how we know about Jesus. When we read the word, we know about Jesus and we know what God has done for us, how he went to Calvary and he rose again and he's waiting for us to come join him. Is how we grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The Bible is very important because it's essential for our everyday lives. Amen. So, Amen. And today we're going to read... Um, Second Timothy three fourteen to fifteen. Second Timothy three fourteen to fifteen, and it says, "But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child." Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which Amen. are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. 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 So Amen. that's what our team for tonight is going to be the word. So Deaconess Natasha, you can open up. Hallelujah. Okay, so um I'm gonna use um what was the first one? Machu Machu four four. Um Excuse me a minute, please, Sister Deaconess Sandra. Can you go forward, please, in the meanwhile? Oh. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So tonight we're that I just read Second Timothy three fourteen to seventeen. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and and has firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, 
and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings. That means the word, the Bible, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. And this is the a letter from Paul to his student, Timothy. Now, Paul is like now in, near to his death. And he was Timothy's mentor. And he's telling Timothy, um, he, he wants to be sure Timothy was ready for the office that he was appointed to. So Timothy now is a pastor in Ephesus. And Paul is making, wants to make sure that he is equipped to lead the church and teach and lead the people to follow God. And it, it goes on to say before in 2 Timothy chapter 1, it tells us that Timothy was raised by two people, two women, and they were godly women, his mom and his grandmother. And Paul is asking him, telling him, stay focused, stay true to the scriptures from Stay focused on what you were taught from when you were a young kid. And you know what? It's really important for us as parents to, um, to teach our children the word of God in order to bring them salvation. Because salvation comes faith. And when our children's faith is, when, they, when their faith grows, you know, it grows through the word of God. It grows by us teaching them the word of God. And Timothy was taught that word from his mother. His grandmother taught his mother's the, the mother his mother the word, and she taught Timothy the word. The word was passed down to Timothy. The gospel was passed down to Timothy from his mom, and also from Paul because Paul mentored him. So now the word is in him, and Timothy got saved at an early age so the word is in him and paul is telling him don't go back from the word stay focused i want you to Amen. stay focused because the word is powerful and the word brought, b would bring change in people amen it also goes on to say that because god is trustworthy Paul goes on to say there are four things that we have to be focused on that the Bible teaches us. It teaches us to teach, it teaches uh, reproof, it corrects, and it trains in righteousness. Amen. And he's saying it's not only profitable, profitable for salvation, but it's also for sanctification and it's also for Christian growth. It not only leads you to heaven, but it teaches you right living. The Bible teaches us to know God. We must know certain things about God, what he's like, what he wants us to do, because God certainly doesn't want us to perish, but he says he wants all of us to have everlasting life. Amen. The Bible reproves. That means it rebukes. And we need that sometimes. It corrects. It straightens us out. When we accept training and the reproof, we find that we are easily straightened out. And we are straightened in righteousness. It teaches us about the right way to live. Natasha, you have Amen. Anything? Yes. So, um, like I said, I'm going to take um, Matthew 4. Um, that is, uh, Matthew four. We're going to just read from verse one to four. Um, we're, we're preaching on the word, right? When yeah. Jesus, um, it says here in Matthew four from verses one, it says, then Jesus was led up to the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and angered. He was hungry, right? So, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. Okay. Now, 
Jesus is like someone is trying to ask you, do you believe in Jesus? You have to know who Jesus is. He is the true one and true living God, right? You have to know the word. You just cannot live by food because your life is basically in the Bible. The Bible basically is life. It teaches us life, our livelihood daily in the word. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that teaches you life, right? It even goes to Hebrews, uh, is it 4.12? It describes the, the word of God. It says it is sharp. It is powerful. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. Just look at all my things. You got it, Sister Sandra? Hello. Yes. Hello? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hebrews 4 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intention of the heart. What the word of God is telling us tonight is that the word of God is, you can just send forth a word. If you remember when the man was, the, the child was sick and Jesus was going to his house and he said, just send your word. That is, his word is powerful. He just have to, you just have to use the word of God. Yeah, it exposes us. It exposes the word right. of you, God. You just have to God. use the word yes. of God. It is sharper. That means it can cut through anything. Yeah. Just use the word of God. The word of God, it even says it's... um. It's the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. It means the word of God. It cleans you up. It cleans you up. You have to be daily in the word and it would clean you up. If you are a drinker, you just continue to read the word. Yeah. Go into the Bible, read the word, yeah. and it would transform your life. Transform your life totally, yes. Sister Raquel is there. Can't get Sister Raquel. Go ahead, Deaconess. Wait a minute. Sister Raquel. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. We're not getting Sister Raquel this Come evening. On. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. And you know, and 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 God shows himself through the word. We meet Christ in the word. Our faith is renewed by the word. We should meditate on it, obey, and treasure it. Because so much things happen because of the word. This word is so powerful that it changes us. And, and that's what Paul is tell, tell, telling Timothy. The world will change you. And, it, and once the world change you, you would be what God wants you to be. Your life then will reflect the life of Christ, his character. So the word of God, the, the word of God, the Bible, the which is the word of God contains God's stories and it tells us how he left heaven, how he left, he lived a perfect life here on earth, and he was crucified and he was raised from the dead and he ascended to heaven to reign as Lord and Savior to those who would accept him. And you know, so the word of God changes, it changes you. So tonight there's probably someone, some people out there that, you know, with Amen. the word coming to their lives, coming to their life and 
sing and change you because this it says that it reproves it you hear me corrects on. and when something corrects you it straightens you out and when you accept that teaching and reproof you'll find that you can easily be straightened out and you'll be trained in right living it teaches us how to live right and the word of god also sanctify you and and let's turn to back to second timothy 3 verse 14 2 Timothy 3, Deaconess, if you have 2 Timothy 3, verse 14, it says that all scriptures is... 2 Timothy 3, 14? Yes. Verse 16, it tells us that all scriptures... Is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes, and... And it also tells us a little further up that that the scriptures were breathed. They were breathed into. Oh, let's look at that. And, I, I, I. Oh, you can hear. We can hear you now. You can hear me now. Yes. yes. Oh, God! I had so much trouble shooting. The 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 word was inspired by God. God breathed it out. Not that He breathed. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. The word of God was inspired by all these writers. You know, yes. they have over 40 different right over, over yes. 40 different writers. They were they were um inspired. God breathed in um he breathed he, knowledge he in them. what yes. he needs them to write. It's not just these men just get up and write what they want to write, it was God's command. They were controlled by God so that they, they were so controlled by the Holy Spirit that they couldn't write what they wanted to write. They had to write what the Holy Spirit gave them. And these scriptures not only were good for salvation, but it, they're scriptures that God gave them because God bring, breathed them out. They're good for sanctification and spiritual growth. They're, they are not only our map to heaven, but it's also um, our map for growth so yes. the scriptures amen, amen. sister rackham you were saying something i felt alone oh welcome we're glad you're here <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah no oh, no i'm listening sorry so you can jump in okay so you did read Deaconess. Um, yes, first Timothy 3, 14 through 17. Yes. 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 Um, and uh, like everything else, <clears throat> one of the main things about this, the word I heard everyone saying, it's like the essential part of the believer. It's the foundation. It's what we need. Um and like everything, you know me, I always, a few years ago, like before the pandemic, they actually did like a research, a survey to see what people thought about the Bible. And what they found out is most people through at least four generations said that the Bible was a wonderful, sacred or book that you should have. However, they all had reasons as to why they don't use it every day and um what they observed was the younger it um individuals got the less they use the bible so we now have to make sure that we show the people why it's important and um so when i was doing my little research there was this story that um, actually, made, I thought I should share because I think it would make people understand how important the Bible is to the believer's life. So there was this guy called, um, a professor called Ravi, was going to do a speech at a university in Ohio. And um, the taxi driver was taking him to 
whatever building he was to go at. And he passed this wonderful building. And I guess the guy who was taken in was one of the chauffeurs for the university. And he was saying, oh, this is the new art building um, for the modern art. And what the professor observed was that it was definitely postmodern because it was built, they said that the architect designed it on based on life. So the building had no pattern, staircases were going nowhere, pillars was supporting nothing. And um, it was kind of like mindless and senseless. So the professor turned to the chauffeur and asked him, the chauffeur, um, did he do this with the foundation? And the guy laughed and he said, are you crazy? You can't do that with the foundation. You can get away with that with the infrastructure. But once you start tampering with the foundation, you begin to see the serious effects of it. Right. So I say that to say our foundation is the word. The word, yeah. So, yes. and so we can't tamper with that. It is the important part of our building. We see how everyone knows how important the foundation is for a building. So as believers, we need to understand how important the word is for our life. And the, the building, the structures are, the foundation is the word and the pillars in the, is based on the beliefs. Believers, yes. Beliefs that we can find in the Bible. So... Why do we need to read it? We have to. The first thing is that it gives us the will to discern and learn of God. Yes. God's purpose yeah. for life. God's purpose for you know? our life. Yeah. That's the first thing we have to know that, and we'll find it in the word. Like I said, it's the foundation, and everything else is established. Mm -hmm. Um. When we read the, the Bible, the, the first in the Bible is what call, is called the Bible has two dimensions. So we have the scripture, right? And we have the whole power of everything that comes out of there. So you are in error if you don't know the scripture. Just think about it with all that's happening. Mm -hmm. Like Deaconess, I didn't get to change my t-shirt today, but I definitely had to wear it because of what was happening but it's the scripture that's here. When people attack you, I was able to, I knew I would have needed a shirt that talked about the armor of God because mm -hmm. I definitely needed it in my life. So I, I made sure I got that. And when you try to get attacked, yes, I'm talking about the armor of God. I am talking about the armor of God and what is happening. If you don't know the scripture, you are definitely missing out of the power of God. Amen. Never know the power of God if you're not disciplined in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, we all think a lot of times, sometimes, I mean, like for me, I am reading a lot. I am learning a lot. There are lots of things that I taught was in the scriptures. And you taught it was things that you, but it's things that are passed down from mm -hmm. one to the other, to the other, mm -hmm. and it becomes things that you assume is in the Bible because you heard it from a while back. Oh, one yeah, some of those little cliches. Like, yeah, one of the things that I um, okay, talk about is definitely when um, I was in church and Bishop had asked about silent prayer. I honestly swore that that existed. And in reality, it didn't, but I learned that because I was there, and yes, you're in the scripture. Right, Deaconess, you are going to say something. I'm sorry. I just. No, no, no. You go ahead. I'm listening to you. <laughs> I was just talking about all the little scriptures, that, the little yeah. things that we always yeah. do that, that is passed on from generation to generation, but they're not really a part. And we grow up believing that these are in the like cleansiness is next to God. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Another yeah. one is God help those who help themselves. Themselves, yes. It's not I, there. You know? I, 
I literally grew up thinking that those two things were in, were the, in the scriptures. Yeah. Right. But they're not in the word. Right. So if you are not in the word, what you are doing is you're basing your life on myths and on godless, not just myths, godless myths and old wife tales. And mm -hmm. these are things that you're going to pass on to your children. Who True. Pass on. But again, yeah. foundation is important that we get into it and we read you know um can i say something go ahead this is just said foundation is important and it's really important and this yeah. one is showing us here in second timothy that timothy's foundation brought him where he was because yes. first it was passed from his grandmother, his grandmother. His mother then it was passed to him the gospel was passed to him so it gave him wisdom it made him wise and and that that wisdom led him to salvation so now he has a good foundation now paul is trying to make him focus on stay focused so that he'll be able to train as a pastor, he'd be able to lead the flock in the right way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Look, look, at, look at this for me, like for all of us. Yeah. How many of us, when we get an item or a gift, or even if we buy it ourselves, how many of us actually go to the manual and go through the instructions? We don't. I because, really, right. We don't. We just figure it out and we fix, fix it, it or do whatever. We figure it out. We're yeah. not going to go through the manual. I know for me, that's what I like to do. I don't sit there and say I'm going through mm -mm. until I get stuck. Like, I just spent some time. I learned something about my volume just now. And maybe had I done this before, I would not have. But it took a situation for me to figure it out. Right. You know, you have to read your manuals to get yes. the full benefit of whatever yes. it is you've bought. Oh, my God. In the word. Okay. Yes. 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 What yes. did Jesus say? You are in error because you do not know the manual of life. Mm -hmm. You think yes. you do, but you don't. Think about it. I mean, now we don't have VCRs, but think about back in the day when you got a VCR and you like plugged in, or even if you get an alarm clock and you plug it in right now, it starts flashing at 12. Mm -hmm. right? yes, yes. Then you have to set um, it. Set it. Exactly. But because of the complexity of life and all the inaccurate, you know, philosophies, you know, with, with everything is bombarded. And you, another thing is like everything happens for a reason. You know, right. We have to have the daily download of the right ideas and the truths about God. If we don't, guess what we're going to be like? We are going to be like that VCR or that clock that's plugged in My with flashing. Light. <laughs> flashing. You don't have the right thoughts, you don't have the right ideas attitudes about God mm -hmm. affects, right. how God affects everything you know yes. that's so true because everything you say um everything you say or do is driven by what you believe yes you know so mm -hmm. it's essential to have the truth of God in you otherwise you're living off half truths okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh the, yeah. The second yeah. dimension of the word mm -hmm. is of is the word of the Lord, which is God's um which which is God's personal word to you in this moment. Now this is a big one. Go ahead. This is where it gets exciting. This is where it leaves Sunday school and church and it comes to your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. When God has a word for you in the moment, look at what 2 Samuel 7 verses 4 to 5 says. Right? Let me know when you got mm -hmm. it. 2 Samuel? Yes. 
seven verses four to five. Oh, got it. Got it? Yeah. That night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David, that is what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. And God said, you're not the one who's going to build God's temple. Your son Solomon will ultimately build God's temple. When you begin to study the scriptures, you learn to recognize the living word of God. Yes. It'll come to you through the scriptures, which is God's specific word for you in your life at that specific moment, mm -hmm. that specific time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how many of you, how many of us think we've experienced that? I'm a little young. Uh, things pop in every now and then. But you begin reading. Begin reading the word. Get with it, you know? I would love to have that. The only way we can have it and constantly mm -hmm. have it in our lives is if we are constantly digging in, meditating, okay. and reading the word. Oh, of God, yes. yes. That's the only way we can do it. Because if it's not a part of us, we can't use it. True. If we don't have a relationship with God, it can't happen. If I don't have a relationship with you ladies, certain things cannot happen. It mm -hmm. is necessary. You understand? So we have to get our foundation. Together. If our foundation is not right, right. our pillars our house is not going to fall. It's going to fall. It's we're gonna not fall. Gonna win those battles. We are yeah. not going to be able to conquer. There's no victory. Conquer. Okay? Um, this same guy, you know, was uh, ministering in Vietnam. And he, because he was over there and he was learning a new language, one of his interpreters was a very young and energetic Christian. And he'd worked for the translation forces of the uh, Americans. And it was very good for both of them. They built a relationship and, and so on. And, you know, after things went away, he went back and he lost touch with his interpreter. But 17 years later, and I'll tell you why this is very good. He got a call from this guy. And when he picked up the phone, the person said, Brother Ravi, that was his name. And he immediately recognized his voice. And, you know, he began to tell the story. He said, you know, shortly after Vietnam fell and everyone went back and he was left there by himself. He was thrown in jail because... Um, they felt that he helped uh, the Americans. And he said he, he felt really down because he was wondering what happened to God. So he refused to deal with anything that um, had to do with God. And he was given a task and he actually had to clean probably the dirtiest place ever. And he found this paper, and when he opened it, guess what was written on it? Romans 8, 28. Okay, I can do all things. And he began all reading. Things work together. Right? All things work, work together. All things work together for good for those, who love, those who love God. And with that, he stopped, and he realized there is a purpose. And he was in there, he couldn't have access to the Bible, but there was some general who definitely did not. He read it and he wept. And he knew his Bible. And he knew that there was not a more relevant passage for him at that time. And he surrendered and he cried out to God, asking for mm -hmm. forgiveness. Because remember, he is now saying, I don't have time for you. You have deserted me. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
uh, but the commander that had this Bible would constantly rip the pages out and so on. But he collected the pages and he made his Bible back and he started reading his Bible. And ultimately, he eventually got out and he made it to America. The word of God is living and it was what he needed at that time. Yes. God knew he needed that at that time. Right. And he ensured that that particular thing in whatever way or form was placed there at that time so he could have access it, to it at that time and so he can be encouraged to do it at that time. I will say this. This might not be a word, but I was saying this to... Um, Deaconess, was it Saturday? And I thought it was funny because sometimes, you know, after a hard day of work and you have to come on on Wednesday, it's a little tiring. And for example, today I had something to go to and I came in at maybe 10 to 7 or whatever, but whatever, I'm on. But I was talking to someone on Friday and they said this to me and I don't know well, I'm taking the good part of it. They want to come to the church that I go to and not for any, the only reason why they want to come is because they need mm -hmm. to see a church that could actually get me to do this on a Wednesday night. So whatever church could get me to do this on a Wednesday night, <laughs> they want to come to the church. <laughs> so when they said that to me, I didn't know if I should be offended or if I should be happy. But I'm happy because it yes. means that I'm bringing someone there or I'm doing something. Like you guys know that I'm on here and I always say, I don't want to have to say the word to people for them to want to come. I want them mm -hmm. to see my actions and based on my actions, oh, it should be easy hallelujah. to bring them yes. in. Yes. So you kind of feel a little kind <laughs> of way because they said that. But you're still happy because it's yes, happen. yes. You understand? So mm -hmm. you know it was a it was good for me because yes. you know it's like, oh yeah, I'm feeling it encouraged tired. you. But it was good encouragement. I know I'm gonna yes. come on and I'm gonna do this because she's like, I watch you every Wednesday night when mm -hmm. you're on. So right, amen. Because I know this is important and it meant a lot that someone can see this whether. I was radical or whatever, and they can understand <laughs> that God is great and wonderful, that even me can be sitting here and talking about his wonderful word. word. Telling Amen. people. It. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, <laughs> you know something that just came to my mind. Yes. Make sure you're buying what you're selling. <laughs> Make sure the word transform you. The word did transform you, and you and you not you not only buy you not you bought it, and now you're selling it back. You're so selling it, yes. The person saw what the I word think. did for you. It it transfer transform you. So <laughs> she wants we're, to come and get. Yeah, we're thing. making a profit. We're making a profit. We're not yes. just <laughs> keeping it basic right now. You know. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so I say God makes things, you know, because, yes, you might be a little whatever, but, yes, he ensured. And that, it might have been one sentence or two sentences, but I know that yes. I am going to be on here every Wednesday, no matter what, unless I am probably not in New York or something. But even if you're not in New York, once you have Internet access... There I is like yes, yes, you know. I know. Listen, I, I know. From work so late, rushing, rushing, rush. I was like, I'm not gonna miss because the truth of the matter is sometimes you're so tired, and the enemy would whisper in your ears, "You don't have to go on tonight. You know, go and lay down, go and relax." But you have to be persistent. You have persistent to do what, what you have. Yes, you have to do what you have you to have do to. because when you the, the word of God said in Psalms 1, 1905, your word is a lamp to my feet. Yes. You know, so you got to do what you got to do and a light to my path. So I got to stick with the word. 
Yes, you have yep. to. <laughs> and again, <laughs> foundation, foundation, foundation. Yes. If you were not in it, how will you know if it's a true word from God? Right. How do you know that? Do you want someone to tell you if it's wrong? If the scripture contradicts, you know, you should be able to know that. You don't need people to do that for you. When you're mm -hmm. young and then you're coming, yes. But you need to sp take time and spend to get in there. When we are at our jobs, we do whatever we have to do to get, you know, whatever high flying position we want. Yes. Study this, we learn that, you yes. know, whatever it is that is necessary for us to get there. Yeah. Why can't we do the same, same thing, thing our Heavenly Father? Yeah. First, that we are here. He's taking care of us. He's yes. protecting us from so many things. Yes. For our families, providing for us. And yes. yet still, we wouldn't sink into what we need to sink into to ensure that we are sitting on that pedestal for him, that people can see him in us, that people can hear him even in our speech. Yes. I'm telling you, my words were awful, but right now <laughs> at my job, people do not do it anymore. Mm -mm. They apologize if it slips up. Before we'd be having a royal commune with those words, mm -hmm. you have to ensure that your attitude, everything that you're doing is a hundred percent saying, I am a child of God yes. and I am completely transformed no matter what. What? Yes. No matter yes. what. You can't yes. listen. We're human. We always want to try to slip back with mm -hmm. some and people get on our nerves. But yesterday, like I said, Deaconess, they got on my nerves, but I put on my Your shirt, today. shirt and I went out today. And that was all. They were like, oh, you look like a knight. I said, yes, and read who's knight. So that's what you have to do. Make sure that you're hitting them with it so that there's no tomorrow. They don't know what's happening with them. They have to try to be like you. Amen. Amen. Happy. Amen. You have the unspeakable joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. All that they want, they want that. Mm -hmm. you know, let your light shine. shine yes. yes, yes, yes. Here's a second purpose of the word in our lives. Course correction. Yes, correction. Course yes. correction. So there's this guy who was telling who was telling a story as a family reunion. You know, they were taking six of them taking a boat 26 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico. Not me. They hit a spot over old wreck. And there was a school of Amberjack sharks. And within 10 minutes, mm -hmm. they pulled in four Amberjack. But then all of a sudden it stopped. Nothing, not a bite. So the owner of the boat said, guys, we've got to move the boat. We've drifted. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell we drifted, but we drifted over 100 yards away from the boat. Um, and he looked around and where the wreck was and where they were fishing. And this is what he says. Christians or believers lose spiritual vitality mm -hmm. or quit catching fish in their fate. It's not through some major tsunami, mm -hmm. crash or burn. It's through this subtle, slow drifting away. Mm -hmm. So it's not major. But we start doing little things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we drift away and we get pushed off the path. Yes. We have to stay grounded in our foundation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, if we are constantly reading the word, we are going to be sensitive to things that disturb God. 
Yes. That are cancerous to our own lives. Greed, loss, selfishness. Yes. If not, how are we going to do? We're going to forget about all those things. We might ultimately start getting a little greedy and selfish, you know? It teaches you not only what is right in the eyes of God, but yeah. also wrong. Mm -hmm. It creates boundaries for us. You know, I will say this from reading the word and getting, you know, studying and getting involved. Mm -hmm. There are lots of things that I did not look at the way I look at now. And, um, I can say that because I have lots of conversations. I try to have like a weekly conversation with elder, but I will say this, there's lots of things I happened and I didn't pay attention to them the way I do, but now I have a different eye and now I see things differently. So True. when someone is standing in front of me, for example, I was saying to Deacon yesterday, I had to go to um, a final meeting today for work and, um, it was at a rooftop um, restaurant, whatever. So we were there and I went and the first thing they said was, oh my God, you need to have a drink. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said, yes, water, cold water. And I said, <laughs> I don't drink anymore. You guys know that. Well, because they knew me when I was drinking. That's why they said oh. that. And I said, I don't drink anymore. And they're like, are you sure? It took them like three minutes before I said, okay, bring me a Coke, right? So I sat there for an hour and I drank a little glass of the Coke or whatever. I say that to say, <laughs> and there was a little bit of things, you know, maybe you could have just a little that. But I say that to say, I know it's wrong and I know it wasn't the right thing to do. Because I've been saying to these people that I have changed. They have not changed. So they will constantly ask me to do what I shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. what the effects of that is. And I know if tomorrow I were to say to one of them, mm -hmm. come to church with me or let's go do something spiritually or godly, they are going to want to say to me, do you remember when we had that drink on June 15th? Yes. So yes. I, I can be a part of the world, but I will not be in the things in of the world. world. Yes. You know, so clear divide. I was the only person there sitting there with my coat. Then I had to have an explanation for my shirt, but that was good. I explained mm -hmm. about the, um, the, um, Fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. the armor of God. So that's what my shirt said today. And then I was tempted. The, the devil kept telling me, I don't think you should go to the function with that shirt. I think you should go and take, go and take it off. No. But I went anyway, and I was able to have a nice conversation about it. And there actually was a guy there, which is very strange, who did not know this scripture. And I said, yes, it's it's from the Bible. It tells you exactly where it is. Get the Bible and read it. But I don't think he reads the Bible because he did not. And I know this is like a popular, like one of those scriptures, like John 3.16. But right. I, like I said, you can't be in there and want them to come with you and do what they're doing. They're doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Friends, why do I need to come with you? I can just stay right here and do all that I'm doing because we're doing the same thing. Right. So what, what am I doing? You know, the word acts as a mirror. Yes. It allows mm -hmm. us to see mm -hmm. ourselves. To see mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. we are. That and is why, that is why it says sister Raquel, don't, don't listen to the word, right? Don't listen to it and deceive yourself. Do what it says. 
Yes, exactly. And at the same time, it allows you to see who you can become. Yes. So Amen. Yes, you might not be there, but it lets you see who you can become. Yes. You know, so you have something that you're working towards. It helps you. It helps you to believe the right thing and live the right way. Exactly. Right yes. yes. So what is the amount of your Bible intake? Mm. Are you a diligent reader of the word of God? I hope that we all are. I So listen to this. We're lucky. <laughs> Even if we can't read the Bible. We right. can listen. We can listen to the Bible. Yeah. Amen. And I know when we were in the world, we listened to the latest music. Yes, we had our, um, we call it your walk a man and you and have your music. Everything going on. <laughs> so I am urging everyone, including myself, so. that let's get with this zest to do the things of God. We Amen. have to put it in your car. I stopped listening to the radio like I used to, because you hear a lot of things that you shouldn't hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, the more you get into a relationship with God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the more things are pushed out of your life. Right. Amen. You know, so you don't want those things anymore. There is no desire. Right. You know? Right. Um, Deacon Escalas has been my friend for a long time. And I'm telling you, the other day I was in another meeting because I guess these events that I'm a part of, alcohol is a big thing there. Let me just say that. And, um, we were, they were talking about going to put your feet up in the sand and have a, um, a beer or something. And my husband was passing by and he was like, you said you wanted a what? Not, he was just surprised that I said it, that they said the beer. I said I didn't say wanted a beer. They said they wanted a beer. Right. I was surprised because for the last three years, he couldn't get me to drink a beer. So he yeah. was, and I was saying that I wanted a beer. You know. You know? And I mean, Deacon Escalette knows me for a while. I would really have a wonderful time with that stuff. But thank God I can have it in the house for whichever, and I would not um, have not a sip of it, no matter how much it's offered to me. And I thank Amen. God for his word and strength to be able to do that. You know? Um, listen, we have to get with the word. Amen. Our is necessary. Our foundation is important. Without that foundation, we yes. are absolutely nowhere. You know, um, no, nowhere. for many people, this service is all of the Bible that mm -hmm. will contact every week. You know, the service that we go every Sunday, that's all yeah. they do for the Bible. Oh yeah, some yeah, they don't pick up the Bible. They don't pick up the Bible after. After it's it means nothing to them. That, that is why I always um on my job sometimes, you know, you know, try you try to interact with some folks because what I do, I have the word from since I go into work, I have the word, I have the word. They have this customer every time he come in, he was like, Listen. You need to set up the offering basket on the side. Because every time I come in here, they have church. No offering is taken. <laughs> you know, it's that you have to have the word. Yeah. You know, yes. you got to. It's it a food. Yeah, it, it's a, it, it becomes a lifestyle. Yes. Because yes. back then, you didn't have no, no shame in your game to listen to whatever lyrics yeah. you want to listen to. You know, so now... Now you, you're listening to the word of God. Every day you're trying to feed your spirit positiveness. You're yeah. trying to, because um, is it Psalms 18? Psalms 18, it's it. Um, let me make sure I get the right scripture. Psalms 18. Uh, okay. 
Psalms 18 verse 30. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those who trust in him. Amen. Amen. It, means, it means he's a shield. Once you trust in God, you take refuge in him. Mm -hmm. He protects you. He, he protects have you, you there. He you know, there, there is no there is no arm surrounding yourself in the word of God. You need to be covered daily. And with the times we're living in now, there is no there is no need for you playing around. You need to be so grounded in the word and the things of God. Amen. So let me Amen. ask a question. What would happen, right? Yeah. If you were told you can only eat one day a week for the rest of your life. Food, that is, one day a week. You can eat as much as you want on that day, but only one day. Only you one day. Do you think that that would be able to keep you for the entire week? Will be able to give you energy for you to make no. it? No, no. no. So, Same goes for the word of God. Word. Why are we doing that with God's word? <laughs> it keeps Same you from goes the word you read it daily. You have daily. Exactly. daily. Because so you know the same. You know that the same if you don't read the word of God, the word of God will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the from, word. Yes, yes. yes. So you it's have just to, like I was <laughs> listening to this story, Sister Rachel. I know you're familiar with all these little you know stories. Um <laughs> This voil, voil, what is the it? Violinist. Violinist. Mm -hmm. That's with the string and the guitar, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. He loves to play his violin so bad and he had it and he ended up losing it. And this guy bought it, right? But his intention was to put it like, you know, in those little um, auctions, those like, like mm -hmm. a souvenir. Yeah. Right? So when this young man heard where it was, he went and he tried to offer him big sums of money to buy it. And he said, no, I need it. So he said, okay, so can I have one last play, you know, before you put it up? And he decided to allow him to play. And the way the young man played so, it, it was so melodious. You know, tears came to his eyes. He said, you know what? You can have the violin, you know, because it is not meant to be put up on a shelf as a storage. It means the same for your Bible. Your Bible is not meant to be on the bookshelf. No, it's not. Or in the drawer or somewhere just sitting there. The Bible is meant to be read daily. Amen. And like Sister Rachel said, if you can read it, sometimes I get caught up and I would plug it in and have the word. Listen okay. to the word. Yeah, I used to go to sleep with music. I now go to sleep with the word. I have listen to, to the word. Guess what? Oh, yes. Whatever you go to sleep with in your mind, that's what you wake up with in the morning. In the morning, yes. So I'm going to sleep morning. with it and I'm waking up with it. It has to be my life. If it's not my life, if I'm not making it that, then I'm not doing anything, you know? So yeah. we have to, just like how we make sure, oh, I didn't have breakfast. Oh, I need lunch. Oh, I need dinner. We need mm -hmm. to make sure we do those things with God's word. Yes. So, Elder so Sharon, um, when I started Soul Winners, you know, when we used to have women meetings, she said that, you know, you make sure you always have gospel playing. And I was like, who does that? sleeping with that music playing 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 but as time goes by you know i tried it and it is very comforting soothing. it's comforting. very comforting and soothing at night listen i don't go to bed Water. without my little laptop at the bed corner and i have all my music playing or i put on the scripture 
And you know, in your sleep, then when you wake up during the night, as soon as you wake up, the word is there instead of yeah. something else, you know, that would take yeah. your mind places. The word yeah. of God is right there. It becomes yes. a lifestyle. That's you know, what it's it like is. um Bishop always said, Oh, you know, you're saved, right? But um, are you converted? Yeah. When you when you're converted to the things of God, it becomes a lifestyle. These things become normal to you. Like someone would look at you, you know. It it <laughs> you look I don't want to go there. You listen, you look uncomfortable in the situations that you were comfortable before. Yes. I I think I remember like Deaconess, I told you a year ago, it was the first yeah. time that someone said to me, You seem very out of place. And I was happy because it was a situation that I would normally be in place. But now it was obvious to people that I was out of place. Okay? So mm -hmm. I'm out of place. That's fine. Because that's not how it is. So um, we know that just like how we do with our food and so on, let's do this. Every week, no matter how much we do with the word or how much we put into the Bible throughout the week, challenge yourself to take it up a step. Mm -hmm. so if you're not studying it daily, let's find time to study it daily. Yes. If you're not reading it every day, find, if you're reading it every day, read it a little more. If you're mm -hmm. spending 30 minutes, do 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know? We all lead busy lives. Mm -hmm. I know I'm guilty of this. And it may be hard to find time to do those things. But it is necessary for good spiritual health and training. For Amen. The just that are lying that lie ahead of us amen amen following in him and we are to accomplish his vision then we do have to be devoted and we do have to make sure that we do those things it, it we will have to sacrifice things you know but it's worthwhile you will have to sacrifice but it's worthwhile mm -hmm. Ever heard anyone complaining that they made a sacrifice or they did this or they did that and they did not benefit ultimately from um, being a good Christian and a believer and God blessing and helping them? Yes. It's, it's, it's kind of like the opposite. If you don't take the time to do it, then you ultimately suffer true you know um amen and then this is gonna be my i think my last little story for tonight um <laughs> i know i like stories and trust me we're enjoying it because you know the way how you put it out and then they have the scriptures to back yeah. it up so we're all doing a great job sister raquel we applaud you Thank you. <laughs> Wade Hudson, right, was telling this story um, of this guy, Ben, who left the East Coast and he headed out West in hopes to make his fortune. Um, and this was a long time ago in 1898. And he wasn't rich, but he'd accumulated three, over 300 acres of good land, built a comfortable farmhouse, and he raised corn and all his vegetables, he managed to build his herd of cattle to about 200. And having accomplished all of this in only eight years, he decided it was now time. The ad that he placed in the New York newspaper said, wanted a good woman willing to be a pen pal. Marriage is a possibility for the right woman. Before long, he received, you know, letters from many mm -hmm. and or Molly, and you know, their correspondence. Finally, finally met her, went to meet her, 
And when the train arrived, you know, there was a whole lot of women getting off. And suddenly just yelled out, Molly over here, because he didn't know who he was looking for. She looked his way and walked over to him and smiled, held out her hand, you know, all that good stuff. And she said, how did you know who I was? He reached into his back pocket of his overalls and said, from these letters, but there are no pictures in them. He dropped his head a bit and said, oh, yes, they are. There's lots of pictures in your words. You see, he spent hours reading every day, every word, looking for every little clue that could tell him who Molly really was. He had fallen in love with, his, with her words, words that painted a portrait of what she was. God's precious words in his Bible, if we were to do what Ben did, sit, continuously read every word, look for every little detail, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to wonder who God is. Amen. We'll Amen. in love with his word. Amen. We'll know who he is when he's there because we spent so much time studying his word, digesting it, using, going over every little word day after day, not just reading, but meditating, taking Amen. time to be in that quiet place and Amen. read his word. We would have no problems in figuring out what he wants from us and also Use mm. that mirror, like we said, not to only see ourselves, but to see what we can ultimately become. Amen. Amen. Knowing when he is speaking to us at that time, at that moment, for that situation, ladies. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Raquel. God bless you. Let's remember that we know God through the word. We meet Christ in the word. Our faith is renewed by the word. Amen. We should meditate on it. We should obey and we should, should treasure it. And it reveals the most important message we need to know. There's no other book that communicates that message except God's word, the word. In the book, in this, in the book, the Bible, we have the good news, which is the gospel. It tells us that salvation is, is found in Christ alone. There's no other way. He loves us. He dies for us. He took mm -hmm. judgment for our sins upon himself and he rose again. He alone has the power to forgive all of us from our sins. And that message tonight is true for children. It's true for every adult out there that's at the, hearing the sounding of our voice. It's true for you. And tonight I want to give you an opportunity to make him Lord and Savior of your life. Remember that he was crucified for us. And all he wants to do, he loves us so much that he gave himself to die for us. And all he wants us to do right now is to, is to accept him and make him Lord and Savior of, you, of, of our lives. And making him Lord and Savior of our life is really, really simple. The word of God says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that whosoever means you and you and you. It doesn't mean the rich man. It means everyone. God makes it out there that everyone can have eternal life. And Romans 9 and 10 tells us if we say it with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that Christ raised him from the dead, we are saved. And it's that simple. 
really, really simple, simple. It's just a matter of believing and confessing it with your mouth. And tonight, if that is you and you want to make him Lord and Savior of your life, you want to have that eternal life with you, I want you to repeat this, this simple prayer with me. Father, I want to be a part of your family. You said in your word, if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I would be saved. So now, Father, I'm making that confession. I accept you now as my personal Savior. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Satan, you're no longer my boss. Jesus, you are my Savior. I am saved. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So tonight, if you've made that confession, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Welcome, 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 welcome. And before we go, we, I just want to leave you with four simple instructions and that find a church around your way if you and start attending. And if you can't find a church, you're free, free to come and worship with us at 1688 St. Mark's Avenue. We're located at the corner of Eastern Parkway and Rockaway Avenue. We're a church where the family comes first. And, and if you can't make it to our church, we'll, we will help you find a church. Um, number two, love one another. Amen. Love love god is love and that's where he wants us to love one another love to it hurts forgive love number three read your word of god read the word of god get into the bible read 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 it transforms your life like sister raquel was saying tonight it transforms you and doesn't happen overnight it happens day daily it's just like like the carpenter Jesus, he's taking he taking the chisel, and every day he's chipping something off of your life, and yes. so then you he transform you. It, it's, it's a process. And number four, pay your tithes. Amen. And you might be asking tonight, what's a tithe? A tithe is ten percent of your total earnings. So tonight, if that's you. If you have any questions, feel free to call us at 718-908-9873. And the number once again is 718-906-9873. Um, we're always there to answer you. If you have a problem, you don't understand the word of God, there's always someone there to answer and go over the word of God with you. So tonight, I want to welcome you once again to the body of Christ. And if you want to, you can drop your name down in the chat and someone will reach out to you. Someone will call you and will give you information, what resources that would help you in your walk with Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, Ms. Natasha, would you close us out in pray? Hallelujah. Um, I just want to leave one scripture, um, Deaconess Sandra and Sister Raquel. Um, it's taken from Colossians 3, verses 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Remember what we talk about, Sister Raquel. You just have the word. Either song you have your gospel playing or you have the word playing. So you meditate, you have it in your heart, singing songs and hymns to Jesus. Anyway, hallelujah. Thank you, viewers, for tonight. We hope we have reached you and our teaching, you know, you would get into the habit of reading your word and don't just read the word, but do as the words say. Yeah.
Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you for tonight, oh God. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Lord, cover us, oh God, under your blood through the night. Give us sweet night rest, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, as you continue, oh God, as we leave, not from your presence, angel of the Lord, encamp around about us. Protect us. Protect our family. Protect our bishop, our pastors, all the leaders. We give you praise, thanks, honor, and glory in all the name of the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the light of his glorious continents continue to shine, shine upon, you. upon you. Peace. God bless you, and may God bless your living, your living soul. soul. Amen. Good Amen. night, Good sisters night. in Christ. Good night.